Boko Haram might not be sponsored by local entities as we previously thought as reports that Turkey is supplying sophisticated weapons to the terrorist group have emerged and now has caught the attention of the defense headquarters who has described it as a serious issue. Well, joining me to discuss this, I have Peter Emilian. He is a security expert. It's good to have you join us, Peter. Thank you, Maria. And of course, we still have Ugochuku Ikeako. He's a political analyst. Thank you, Go, for staying with us. I'm going to start with you, Peter, because this is your forte. Um, I remember in 2017, okay. if I'm not mistaken, okay. at the beginning of 2017, uh, yes, if not at the end of 2016, we had a first tranche of ammunition that was intercepted yes. by South African government. And where did the guns emanate from? Turkey. It was in the news. We made too much noise about it. I'm sorry. I never heard anything about that story again until another tranche of a cash came in. It got into the country and was intercepted by soldiers midtown. Yes. And nobody has talked about it. And here we are again. Turkey is in the news. And Nigeria is still somehow stringed to it. Does this raise any questions in your mind? Well, um, from a security um, professional's perspective, I, there's no cause for concern. In the sense that, I'll, I'll say this from this perspective, um, even, in, even when they mop up guns and ammunition, typically, um, the sanctions that are meted are usually meted out quietly because um, the nature of intelligence that usually results in such such a success um, requires that the aftermath of it is not widely broadcast. So once the issue has been dealt with, you why know, isn't it broadcast? It's, 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 it's the nature of security. Sometimes you don't you don't you don't you don't put out your successes out there because you have sources, you have you have you have assets, you have men on ground, you have. Um, places from which you're gathering information. And the more you, you trumpet a particular situation, the more you can expose some of your assets to, to harm. Um, so with the Turkey issue now, I just want to say that for me, I, while I don't dismiss it, I don't also accept it. Because first of all, knowing what we know now, this could also be a bit of fake news. I want to give a uh, um, backdrop to this. Um, it was carried by CBN News Channel shortly, uh, recently, about China um, about uh, Turkey being a major supplier and CBN is not necessarily a fake channel or a fake news channel they're not known to carry fake news yes so now with, with the nature of what we do even even if information warfare psychological operations propaganda it's very possible that innocuously and you, you see to establish credibility a bit of information that is false can be placed in a credible source and that's what we've seen this before in typical Nigerian newspapers they've carried stories that had no had no truth but they just ran with the, the headlines they found on like clickbait and then later they had to retract the story so it, it, I believe the same thing has happened here um, why am I saying this? Um, there have been times past before where this particular information that we're hearing now that is just making the rounds, it, it purportedly, I think it, it first came out in 2014, 2015. So intelligence community and security community, we were aware that there was supposedly a leak somewhere that um, somebody had said on, so somebody had said on tape on, or, or video that um, the current president of Turkey, who was prime minister then, had been involved in smuggling ammunition to Nigeria and they weren't sure if it was Christians or Muslims that the ammunition was going to kill. Um, now, with this, something called this, this phenomenon called deep fakes on the dark web of the internet, people can click, take your voice and make it sound like something else you have never said. So it's very so what possible. you're telling me mm -hmm. is that this is fake news. It's possible that, there, that it is. And, it, and even, if it, even if it is not, it is too early for us to jump to conclusion. It's possible that this could just be a, a, a ploy to distract us from what, from what the real issues are. Because it's impossible for you to tell me that Turkey is the sole sponsor or sole supplier of equipment to, Bo, to Boko Haram. Why am I saying this? In 2020, let me go back to um, when President Jonathan was president of Nigeria um, and Gaddafi was still alive. Um, one of the things that happened was that a lot of information we're hearing, rumor mill was having it that um, guns were being smuggled from, from Libya down to Nigeria. If you remember, Gaddafi and Nigeria had a diplomatic role. He had said Nigeria should be balkanized, should be divided into or, or by religious lines. And in response, Nigerian gov the Nigerian government withdrew our ambassador to Libya where, where there, there, were a strain, there was a strain in relations, basically. Um, at that time, Anything that happened afterwards with Boko Haram, a lot of people attributed that those incidents to Gaddafi trying to mess Nigeria up. In fact, the UN bombing in 
August 2011, here in office in Abuja, the first two hours of that incident happening, people were saying, ah, it's Gaddafi's men, it's Gaddafi's men. And if we had reacted based on that information, which we found out to not be true, Nigeria could have, I mean, evidently we had wise people in, in government, the NSA was, was a smarter man, they didn't react based on that. Now, typically, even if it is true that, that um, Turkey is responsible for some ammunition going out. Look at Nigeria as well. There are incidents where we have heard that some of the crude oil that is stolen from our creeks was smuggled to gorilla, gorilla fighters from China, from Hong Kong, from different places to go and foment trouble. Now, if those countries were to hear this information, they could also say too that Nigeria, being a sponsor or being a hotbed of terrorism, is also sending or fueling conflict in their, in their region. As a security expert yes. now, because you're being very diplomatic about it, which is interesting. There is, if there be any iota of truth in this, what should our homeland be doing? What should intelligence in general be doing to, to, to check the veracity of these claims? Because they might not be true, but there might be some eye to truth to oh, it. Oh, evident, like I said, this information is not new. It's not new information. This, this, so, this supposed information that we are hearing now has been around since for at least three years, to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge. Now, we have the NIA, the Nigerian Intelligence Agency, National Intelligence Agency, I meant to say. We have, we have intelligence assets and even, even, even partner nations who are willing to help us with fighting this Boko Haram thing. So if it is indeed true, we, are, we, we, can, we, we can be sure that they are doing their best to scrutinize how best to block um, the inflow of, of, of weapons in. I'm not saying they will, they will be 100% successful, but to the extent that this claim is also causing political stay in, in the polity, is also, if you look at it, Turkey is, is, is having other crises now, political crisis. Erdogan is having issues with Israel. He's, 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 he's been accused of having a hand in Syria and other conflicts elsewhere. Um, that's why I'm, I'm very careful what, what, we, what we pick off of, off of one social media report. If you go and check, you can, the, the, the particular clip where that thing has said, it could have been doctored. So for me, what I'm concerned about is, our agencies doing what they can do. Who are we working with to ensure that this can that this does not happen? Why am I saying this? In 2000 and 2000 and 2003, before um, before the USA invaded Iraq, the last Gulf, the last Iraqi invasion, there was actionable intelligence, to the best of our knowledge, from the CIA, from U the US government, from, from the UK. You had you had um, UK Prime Minister Tony Blair coming out to say that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. You had um, Colin Powell saying the same thing. And at the end of the day, the US and um, partners who were willing to go into that um, action with them, they went unilaterally without a UN resolution, and they went into Iraq, on top of the government, and they didn't find any weapons. But to the best of our knowledge, from what they were saying there, there was actionable intelligence. So even when we see intelligence that looks actionable, one of the things that we do is we process it. We, we run it through different, through different, um, through different grills to so say, okay, how best are, are we going to be sure that this information, who benefits from us reacting in a certain way? You have, there's something called geo strategy. You have to determine if we're acting in a certain way, in whose advantage is it? Even if this is true, if we play like this, in the, in the balance of world power, if we play a certain way, does this affect us? Will oil prices go up? So I think okay. uh, they're handling from that perspective. I'm not, I'm not worried about this. I'll come to you, Go. You and I are not security operators. And whatever news we receive, of course, being that the atmosphere in Nigeria is not as, as good as it used to be, what comes to your mind as an ordinary Nigerian, again, is it, is we it? know how uh, porous our borders are, but then the presidency has closed the borders. Does this help? You see, the truth is this. Uh, I'm a political analyst, and uh, the kind of work we do is interrelated. Uh, for every security issues or announcement, it has, it has an impact on the economy. It has Absolutely. an impact on the polity. All right? mm -hmm. So uh, uh, whether this is fake news or not, the army has said something. Because I'm interested in what the army spokesman said. You read, well, I, I'll you tell you what he said. He said, though the veracity of this claim in the video footage that Turkey is supporting Boko Haram terrorists with weapons cannot be ascertained immediately. However, a serious national security issue, uh, it is a very serious national security issue, and I believe it is receiving required attention uh, at the national strategic level. The temporary closure of our national borders is one of the indications of the national strategic move to checkmate illicit transport, shipment, and peddling of firearms. Nigeria have close to 80 borders. Over 2,000, from, uh, from north as well. So, so and a, a lot of them are not manned. 
All right, so I have no issue with the, uh, with the security, uh, security chief saying what they said, right? This is the best statement they could craft on their own. It's an intelligent statement. But the truth is this. Uh, let's, let's say there's an element of truth to what, what we've heard or what we've seen. There's an element of truth in it. Uh, because it's in a political, uh, uh, something that has a political implication and both economic implications, mm -hmm. like you mentioned earlier, all right, by now, we should be having a, we should be having a conversation with the, the Turkish ambassador in Nigeria. We should be, they need to let us know okay, what is happening. Uh, is, is there any conversation that is going on between Nigeria and Turkey at the moment? Because the thing is, it, is, it has gone beyond uh, the sensitive part of uh, intelligence that is, that is, that is uh, in a way, made for like, so a few people to know what is happening. If this, thing is in, if this information is in the open now, what do we need to know? Okay, what is the Nigerian ambassador saying? What is the foreign affairs minister saying? What are they saying? Uh, would there be any action? Would there be a diplomatic row in the next few days? Would there be a strain in our relationship? All right? Turkey, Turkey is, is, is a key player in the Middle East. All right, and uh, um, uh, Nigeria needs this relationship in terms of our relationship with Turkey and the rest of them within the Middle East you know, to push our oil and to push our relationship and the rest of them. But the truth is this: for something as for some, some for an information as this sensitive and this very important, uh, I, I do not trust. I, I have an issue with Nigeria government. I have an issue with the trust within with our security agencies because over time they've proven themselves not to be effective when you need them to be effective. So my take would be, what are they doing to stop this? If there's an element of truth to this, is anybody going to lose their job? Is anybody going to be sacked because of this? What are they going to do to checkmate this thing? So these are the information that we need to know at this moment. Yeah, we understand that in the past, for America to go into Afghanistan, there's some things came up and so, some things happened that wasn't supposed to happen that we saw later. But as it in the moment in this country, uh, our security is not the best. Right? Our borders are still porous. People are still not safe within the, within the confines of Nigeria. So what should be happening is, is, is for the state and the security agencies to tell us, OK, to assure us, OK, this is going on. This is what we're going to do. Then maybe in the next one week or in the next two weeks, if somebody is found wanting, nobody should cover it up. Somebody should be uh, punished. Somebody should be, uh, if, if possible, suspended or expelled. Or somebody should go down to any disciplinary measures to make sure that, OK, it serves as a deterrent so that if anybody tomorrow wants to do anything contrary against what the Constitution is saying, maybe against the, uh, the interests of Nigeria, you understand that there's a, there's a room for punishment for you. What about so you the don't customs? Quickly, we have just a few seconds. What about the customs? We know that whether the, some, the, the, man, clo the, the man borders are closed uh, or shut down, there are also some borders that are not manned and illegal importations are still taking place. How can we get the customs to be up and doing? Like it goes back to what I'm saying, right? You can't, you can't, you, as it is Nigeria, because we have a pros, but we can't, we can't, we can't police everything. But we need to come, one of the problems in this country that we don't have an effective punishment and merit system. If there's a space where people know that if you're in a custom office and something bad goes through your, your space, or you allow people to smuggle things illegally and the rest of them, and you collect bribe or something like that, tomorrow the custom or whoever is in charge will punish you and it will serve as a deterrent. Because that doesn't happen. People will go on to continue to do this illegal stuff. So it's beyond that, but it's for the army to have, they've assured us this is what this is what they're doing at the moment. And let's hope that they follow up on that and punish whoever is, is responsible. I think that, that would make the people feel safe. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Peter Abidian, security expert, and Guchuki Kiako, political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been an interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, we got to go. Uh, we'll take a short break and bring you our plus report. And when we return, I'll give you my take. The Resource Center for Civic Education, Chris said, has condemned the willful disobedience to court orders by the Department of State Service, TSS. Chris said, said the continuous disobedience to orders of the court is damaging the nation's democracy and eroding the trust of Nigerians on the judiciary. The executive director of Chris said, Ibrahim Ziki Volai, while calling on the DSS to release all political prisoners who have been granted bail by the court, also took a swipe at the attempt by the National Assembly to enact a social media law. He urged lawmakers to show restraint in their actions, saying political power is transient and not permanent. Therefore, when we full and flagrant disobedience of court orders is being instituted as a caution by the government, the very dangerous message being passed to citizens is that the government is above the law. The effect of such reckless erosion of a, pil a prime pillar of law and order is that citizens will stop believing in the efficacy of the judicial process and its outcome. The end result of such arrogant behavior is anarchy. Crasset calls on all institutions of the state, particularly the Department of State Service, DSS, which has been depriving citizens of their freedoms in defiance of court orders to understand the damage that their impunity is doing to the stability and orderly governance of our country. 
crisis similarly condemns the emerging culture of abuse and abridgment of citizen rights and their attacks on free press. The political elite are acting on the basis that they are untouchable because they are in control of political power today. This feeling of invisibility is giving them the confidence that the draconian legislations they are trying to enact will only be used to hold others into jail. Little do they realize that the power which they will today is transient. The rabid champions of this legislation do not seem to realize that if they do not tread with caution, they could someday become victims of the very legislation which they are attempting to enact to harass other citizens. Krasel wishes to admonish the arrowheads of this discredited beast to rather shift their focus to more productive ventures, including legislating to tackle dilapidated health infrastructure, collapse education system, poverty, crimes, unemployment, corruption, and terrorism. Well, Turkey is allegedly funding insurgents. Boko Haram. Uh, Turkey, according to reports, has been supplying arms to Boko Haram. This is a huge allegation, and this makes us wonder what else is out there that may be true. But of course, our security agents are on top of the matter, as they've told us. Nigerians would really want our security services, our defense intelligence, to give answers to our questions, because we need answers. Again, Shiites clash with police uh, uh, in, in protest for the release of their leader again. Too many question marks and a few answers. People want to know what the problem is and what the solution is. But then we're not hearing anything. The silence is so deafening. And lately, protests have become bloodier and deadlier than it has ever been. The question is, what is happening? Where do we go from here? My name is Mariana Cohn, and it's been Plus Politics. <laughs>